Hello, welcome to Talk Tonic, a new segment on the Reputation Today YouTube channel. In this series, we have conversations with global leaders in public relations and communications and allied fields. Our first guest for the very first episode of Talk Tonic is Peter Finn. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Nice to be here. Peter needs no introduction. However, for those of you hearing his name for the first time, Peter Finn is the founding partner of Finn Partners. He's here in India and we'll hear from him in the next few moments as to why he's here and what brings him to India. Have a great time listening to the show and then share this link with your friends so they learn more about Finn Partners and what Peter has been doing over the years. So Peter, what brings you to India? Uh, Finn Partners is 11 years old now. Uh, and uh, we've grown a lot. We started with 11, I'm sorry, we started with six offices, and now we have over 30 offices. Asia is a very important area, growth area for us. And um, so I, of course, during the pandemic, I was, didn't do any travel at all. This is my first international trip since the start of the pandemic. So I wanted to come to Asia uh, for a, an Asia summit that we organized with our senior executives from all of our offices in Asia. We had over 20 executives, and we met in Singapore for a few days. And then I came to India. Of course, um, this is my first trip to India since we acquired SPAG. Uh, and this is it's very exciting. Uh, India is an amazing country. It's very nice to be here. Thank you. You mentioned SPAG. It's been about nine months after the acquisition. Right. Tell us more about the relationship that has evolved in the last nine months with Finn Partners and SPAG. So when Finn Partners was first launched in 2011, we were largely a tech agency, and that was our largest practice for a long period of time. And it is still a very large practice for us. We started our health practice a few years later, and now health has become our largest practice. So having SPAG join Finn Partners has been amazing because they are the iconic agency in India and Asia uh, in the health sector. And we were looking to extend our strong U.S. practice into Asia Pacific, and it's been fantastic for us. Great. So tell us what makes Finn Partners stand out among the pantheon of independent PR firms across the world. What's that one or two things that make you really stand out? So we have a vision statement, which I have shared with um, all of our senior executives and many of our um, uh, the remaining executives in the firm, which is that our goal for Finn Partners is to be a world-class, best place to work, global agency with a heart and a conscience that key clients in markets around the world be proud to have as a partner. The par many other agencies would have pieces of that. I don't believe there's another global agency that has as part of its vision statement that it wants to be an agency with a heart and a conscience. That's very important to us. It's really why Finn Partners exists today, and I think it makes us very different from all other agencies. Independent and uh, holding company agencies are very different from us. So how do you hold your teams and staff across the world to these high standards? What, what do you do differently to make them adhere to the standards you've set over the years? When I meet the principles of a firm that we are thinking of acquiring, the first conversation is all about our values and how that affects our business decisions. And um, we have many, many conversations over many months before we close on an acquisition. So we have an opportunity to make sure that we're culturally aligned. Um, there have been situations where there was a firm with good clients and they did good quality work and we made an offer to acquire them, but in the end decided not to proceed because there was an alignment on values. Interesting. Uh, there are cultural differences across the world, and you mentioned that when you meet a firm that you want to acquire, you look for those. How do you go about looking for those cultural differences that can align with the values that Finn Partners offers? Well, it's really all about the initial conversations and the, the follow-up conversations we have, plus um, we have, uh, I have a group of founding managing partners who launched Finn Partners with me, plus we have global practice leaders. They are involved in all these discussions and they help make me make sure that there is a cultural alignment. There, there have been some situations where an agency with a great reputation would come to meet with us and, and was interested in being part of Finn Partners and um, the, the other founding partners, our, our practice leaders, would join me in a meeting and after would say, they'll never fit in. So then we say, thank you, nice to meet you. Um, this is, we're not the right home for you. Interesting. So what process 
do you go through to arrive at that there could be differences that can be ironed out at times sometimes they can't be so what is it that you really go through as steps that you could share for younger firms in this country and across the world listening to this interview to understand how a company like yours chooses to acquire a firm well after the initial conversation which is an in-depth conversation um the next step is for me to write a proposal our proposals are long they are eight to 12 pages long with a lot of detail on how we operate and our values. And I have a list of the types of clients we won't take. And I, what, what we say in our proposal is that our acquisition agreements will include a provision that the acquired company will agree not to work for those same clients. So we want to be very clear in the beginning of what matters to us. And if a firm that we're talking to is not comfortable, it's best for everybody to say, this is not the right fit. Interesting. So the other industries or clients that you just mentioned that you will choose not to work for at all. What are those industries if there are and how do you go about saying no to those clients? So it was clear from the very beginning that we would not work for any tobacco companies. And um, when vaping first started to emerge, uh, the CEO of vaping company approached me and um, I spoke to our global health practice leader. He said, no, no, <laughs> we're not going to work for vaping because it's the same thing. It's, it's a nicotine delivery system, and people will become addicted to that. So I said to the, the CEO of the firm, thank you for approaching us, but you know we're not the right fit for you. He said, no, 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 you don't understand. We're the good guys. We're going to help people stop smoking. I said, sorry, we're not a, we're not a fit for you. So we never did work for them. Um, a few years ago, there was a, a petition signed by 500 scientists asking PR agencies not to work for fossil fuel companies. We had worked for the Exxon Mobil Foundation for a long time. Uh, and they would do, the foundation was doing good work and we were proud of our help in doing them. The problem is that the, the, the good things that some of the fossil fuel companies do, their small things here are used to distract attention from the things they do that are not so good. So we talked among ourselves about it and decided that we needed to resign the account, which we did. And uh, we will not work at this point for any fossil fuel companies. We will not work for gun manufacturing companies. We will not work for gun, pro-gun lobby groups. Uh, we will not work for clients that are looking for an agency to help them fight environmental protection organizations. Um, we will not work for an organization that denies facts of science, like an anti-vaccination group. Um, we will not work for a group that uh, doesn't un understand that everybody should be treated fairly and equally, regardless of gender or race or sexual orientation. So there are uh, quite a few um, issues that we feel strongly about. And we, we turn away multiple clients every year. It's at least a million dollars of business every year we turn away. That's fascinating. So for those of you listening, and my next question for Peter. Consultancies often say they work with some companies to get a seat at the table and change clients' behavior. But you don't agree with that. What do you see as a better way of doing things, Peter? So when uh, this petition was signed, asking PR uh, and, and advertising agencies not to work with fossil fuel companies, some big agencies continued to work with the, the petroleum uh, uh, industry. And they were criticized by employees and by um, uh, outsiders. And their answer was that we think we can do more good by having a seat at the table. Now, what does that mean? That means that they think they can change, or they say they think they can change their client's behavior. But I, I am afraid I do not believe that because a big global petroleum company, a fossil fuel company, is not going to make their fundamental business decisions based upon advice from a PR firm. A PR firm can affect their communications decisions, but not their fundamental business decisions. So therefore, my feeling is, if we don't want to be associated with that kind of business, we have to say, thank you, but we're not the right agency for you. I don't, I don't think saying well, we want to have a seat at the table is a credible response. That's interesting. We spoke of the values and we have read and heard of the values at Finn Partners. How do you mesh these values with employee communications? How do you make sure employees across the firm understand these values and imbibe them on a day-to-day -day basis? 
I, when I launched Finn Partners, I wrote a two-page letter to all of our employees to explain why I was launching a new firm. And it was all about our core values. The, the one most important value is work hard, play nice, which means treat everybody with respect. Um, we also are dedicated to creating a best place to work environment because I think if you do that, you will keep the best talent. And if you have the best talent, you will do the best work for the clients, keep your clients, and win new clients. So that's very important uh, for us. Um, some other agencies recognize that. Not everybody does. Um, also, one of our values is to make the world a better place. You know, we all have decisions to make as we pass through life. Are we only out for ourselves, or do we want to try, want to try and help other people? We want to try and help other people. And it does affect the, the work we do and the types of clients that we take on. Um, so I wrote this two-page letter about this. And every employee got a copy. And every employee we've hired since then has gotten a copy of that letter in the welcome package. So that's one way we talk. We, we um, encourage everybody to understand what our values are and to follow them. But also, there's constant conversation um, by email or Zoom meetings uh, or you know, in my discussions with uh, other managing partners in the firm. And then they share it with the people who report to them. That's me. So that's internal. How do you do the same externally? You have seven stakeholders, clients, and others outside the firm. How do you convey the same set of values to them and make them align with that? So um, some people used to say to me that clients don't care about these values. These are internal values or maybe they're personal values. Some people have said to me, your employees won't care, which turns out not to be true. Some people have said to me, clients don't care about this. All they want is an agency who will do good work for them. But um, our, uh, Gil Bash, who was our global health practice leader, said to me, no, clients will love this. So we have put on our website um, a statement of our core values, and we, we published a purpose report, which is an in-depth report about all the things we do in the purpose sector to make, help make the world a better place, things that, that members of our team do personally, things that the company does. And I've been amazed at how many potential clients come to us and say, that's the kind of agency I want to work with. So anybody who said these things don't matter, they're wrong. <laughs> clients care. Right. They do. So talking about consultancies that you have acquired over the years, I'm sure there are a lot of firms across the world who see a global PR firm wanting to make them part of their family and their network. So what is it that you see as potential, or what is it that you see in consultancies who are waiting to be acquired and becoming part of the Fin Partners Network? What are the three or four things you look for in these firms? So we, we are approached um, very frequently by uh, agencies that want to be part of Fin Partners. There are approximately 100 agencies that contact us every year who want to be part of Fin Partners, most of whom I say no thank you to. What I look for is deep expertise in a strategic sector, like SPAG has deep expertise in the health sector. That was perfect. That's just what I look for. Um, also, the question is, will a, a potential acquisition help us uh, build market share where we have an office or enter a new market? You know, so the answer with SPAG helped us uh, enter uh, the Indian market and strengthened us overall in Asia Pacific. So it's deep expertise in a particular center, uh, as, as in a particular sector, um, and then there's the, the uh, building market share and, and deepening our expertise. Interesting. There are a lot of youngsters in graduate school who want to make a choice in a career in public relations but are confused at times. What is your message for young people who want to get into PR? Why should somebody choose PR as a career choice? And, and thrive there? What is the message you have for them? Well, uh, the PR sector is growing very rapidly, and the industry has a problem that the industry is growing faster than the available pool of talent. So it is a great industry with huge potential. Uh, one of the questions, uh, I had a town hall when I was in Singapore, an Asia town hall, and one of the questions somebody asked is, are there opportunities for young people to move up in the industry, in, the, in an agency, with infant partners. And um, one of the colleagues I had with me, his name is Howard Solomon, and he is uh, one of our founding managing partners, and he oversees the West Coast for the US and also Asia Pacific. He joined me in 1996 when we acquired a, a tech firm that he was part of in New York. 
And he was an assistant account executive. And now he's one of our founding managing partners, traveling around the world, visiting our offices, representing management of Fin Partners. So I think there are great opportunities in our industry, particularly if you join a rapidly growing agency like Fin Partners. The holding company agencies tend to grow more slowly. Independent agencies grow faster. And I think there are great career opportunities with firms like ours. That was the first episode of Talk Tonic on Reputation Today. We heard amazing insights from Peter Finn, the founding partner of Finn Partners. I'm sure you enjoy listening in. Share this link forward and let your friends listen to the conversation as well. Thank you.